Pleasant morning, everybody. You still have the right to praise the Lord. If you have a life, lift up your hands and still praise God. I know the occasion is a very sad one. My heart is broken. But I'm going to change a little bit of stuff. Do the chants. I will say of the Lord. condolences to bereave family at this time. I know it is hard. I do have this. But God. 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 Some years ago I remember him doing this song. It's our opening song. Years ago I remember him doing this song and we are going to stand. We are going to sing this song. We are going to sing this song. Your grace and mercy. We sang on the choir together. And so.
Mighty God, we thank you, Lord. We pray and ask that you remember his wife. Oh, God, Dr. Anne-Marie, hallelujah, and family in the name of Jesus. Little James, God, mighty God, I pray that you cover him under your blood right now. I pray you come for this heart, dear Jesus. Hallelujah. We ask you to take control, mighty God. Remember all the scripture readings and all the items today, God. We ask you to take everyone in charge, mighty God. Bless each and every one who has made it here, God. Work in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the presence, oh God. We ask you to take full control, mighty God. Lead and direct today, God. And we leave all things in your hand and in your care. In Jesus' holy, precious name, we say thanks. In Jesus' name, amen.
like a set of items and we lead according to the spirit of God really leads us right to you for your name and discussion so the first lesson at this time will be done by Merlin Williams sister who should be taken from Revelation 21 1 to 7 which will be followed by selection from evangelist Leonardo Mitchell and reflection a video recording of Dr. Dave McDonald. Bring that to me. I am And he called me to me. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and pure. Yes. And he said unto me, It is done. And I am come and of you. The beginning and the ending. I will give unto you the first of the fountain of the water of my glory. He that of the comet shall be very confident, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I just have to love the Lord. The Lord knows best. If I go down, all the tears that I If I could count.
if my heart were a window you could look through all the pain and scars you Second, it comes from First Thessalonians 4, reading from verse 13 to verse 18. But I 
I will not have you to be ignorant. Brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of our Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto Unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with, and with, the, and with the truth of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in clothes, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Last verse. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Here in it, a portion of God's word, be honored by saying, Thank be to God. Amen. Amen. It's Dr. Tudor's copy here. Is the video ready? So, the video in the video ready? All right. Sound of the now. And that's what the point from rocks and men.
Good afternoon, everyone. It's still morning. Good morning. Um, seems like I've been here forever. Um, I just want to say thank you to those who are here to offer, you know, your support and to pay your last respect. Um, as you would have heard in a part of the reflection, he was an excellent singer, and I'm just going to do a song that we normally do together. And I really hope that I can do it the way he'd want me to. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it's closer now. Yes, it it's closer now than it's ever been. Said I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. sound of a mighty, of a mighty, a mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now, yes, it gets closer now than it's ever been, said I can almost hear the trumpet. Ooh. 
Let alone your commandment keepers. Easy yourself. Let God arise and the enemies be scattered. God bless you. It's a homegoing ceremony, service for a life of a soldier. Usually I miss his birthdays, but Tuesday. I use the seventh. I used to use the eleventh. But him said, no, sis. But this year, on the seventh of November, I sat in my office and the Lord said, call Dave and tell him happy birthday. 
when I spoke with him and I saw his countenance, he looked sharp. He looked good. And I said, brother, you look nice. And he worshipped God and he worshipped God and he worshipped God. I said, how young are you today? He said, 52, sis. And you know him go out with him things. I didn't know. That would have been the last time I spoke to my brother. But they have good. His eyes were always on Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord said to me, tell his wife thanks. And I said, thank you for taking care of him. Let me tell you, it's not how you start. It's the ending of the journey. And so I want to behove all of us to let go and let God. Because if Jesus were to come now, some of us are not going to be saved. Kataro, Sandori, Lekanturi, in the name of Jesus. Let's go. And let God fight the battle. It is 100%. Can 99 and a half. It cannot do. So let us ensure that our anchor holds and be grip the solid rock. It's a tribute from Dr. Hewlett Carby. Ready? Is it ready? Okay. Then I'll take selection from the sibling and relatives of the McDermott family. Get is a big family, you know. So, you know we're going to have convention up in here. It doesn't matter. We're going to worship God. The McDermott's are worshippers. And we are going to join in worship today. God bless you. A gentle soul dedicated to Pastor Dr. Dave John McDermott. To fulfill a destiny, he must, as he was ordained by God for spiritual greatness, it was understood he may not always come his hand and cried to God for guidance. He sought God's will every step of the way knowing a perfect plan to repay. A compassionate pastor, chaplain, counselor, husband, father, and friend, had a deep affection for children, a mentor, protector, he cherished them all. Blessed are the meek they shall inherit the earth, words of comfort to his heirs. God's command was his to obey, give thanks when things weren't as expected, he ministered, prayed, and prophesied to his flocks on all who he was assigned. Testimony of having in his heart his Savior, and no one could make him waver. Till the soil tirelessly cultivated the wheat in preparation for the day of harvest. Until it sinks in, God do whatever he wants or please. Interfere not in his business. Turning over every aspect of his life to God, held out until his final change came. A firm believer in the word of God, that just as he gave, he has taken away. An important journey was in vision, riding on a beautiful heaven-bound train. Trusting in God always, he waited and obeyed until his labor on earth was done. On fulfilling God's purpose, he sang like an angel, Lord, take me as I am. Your pleasant smiles are no more. We mourn and remember well a gentle soul. Its purpose has been accomplished with an abundance of peace. It was done. Can we lift our hands in worship?
Can we just worship the Lord? Yeah. And even though we are grieving, yeah. but God's name remains the same. And so as we do this song, for all those who are yeah. grieving, let this be a consolation. Tempted and tried, we are made to wonder why it should be thus. Oh, the dear.
Just getting ready, you know, man. But I guess they use wisdom. We'll understand it. Oh, God bless you, my dear family. I'm late, no matter what call. Late, late, late. Sir, late. Your time. Your time. Your time, dear. Followed by Deacon Kenton Seaton. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. They are grieving. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord. Despite it all, He's in control. Despite it all, nothing take our God by surprise. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, I'm supposed to bring forth a reflection. Um, I am going all the way back remembering our brother Dave as the greatest entertainer on this face of the earth. Growing up as a childhood, in, in our childhood days, we, didn't, we weren't privy to have television in our younger days. And, our brother would entertain us by telling us show that he would see um, in his days at Taki. Um, so they'd, the school would put on a movie or so, and he would come back home, and he would tell us the movie, and he would not miss a detail. It was like watching it for yourself. And anyone that know Dave know how great of a storyteller he is. Anyone knows him know how funny. I don't care who you are. At some point in time, if you came in contact with him, he had you laughing. He had the greatest jokes, greatest story. And then he grew up into this great pastor, minister, 
evangelist, a man that loved God, a man that loved service, a man that goes out of his way each and every time to make sure those that who were shut in hear the word. He was and always will be in my heart a great warrior of God. Now his demise, the father did not tell us how we would go. And thank God it's not the way in which we go that depicts how we shall reign. Amen? Amen. I think John the Baptist got beheaded. Stephen got stoned. And so one would look at it as it is not a, 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 a debt that one would wish on, but his life spoke and speaks for itself. And so I just want to just remember him as he was a great warrior. I can't sing, but I, I would like to sing this chorus. You have me, drummer? That's my drummer right there, you know. <laughs> Good to see you, but Amen. We are marching in the light of God. 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 Oh, we are marching, yeah, we are marching. Oh, we are marching. Oh, we are marching, yeah, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. Marching in the light of God, yeah, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God, yeah, we are marching. Oh, we are marching, yeah, we are marching in the. We are marching, yeah, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. When I get there. Come help me win. Yes, hallelujah. Yes,
service. Praise God. Thank you. Is Deacon Kenton Seaton here? Praise God. The man of God is coming. Praise God, brethren. God is in the place. So I'd make it a little bit easier. Greetings. Praise the Lord. I can just see Dr. Mack right now. This is what he would want. This is what he would want. Nobody crying, nobody weeping, as if we have no hope. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus, our soul and savior. I don't even know where to start. You know, I came to this island on the 29th of May and met this man personally, but before that, he was a mentor to me. And it's hard to comprehend what someone can do for you in six months that somebody have not done from the time you were born. This man, if I had to describe it in one word, I would say integrity. That's all. This is a man of God. You know, there's a power that says, open rebuke is better than secret love. And this man, telling you, he has openly rebuked me. And I can accept it. You know when somebody tells you the truth and it hurts? It is the truth. And, and you can know that it is coming from love. And so I stand here this day reflecting on the short time. It's not the length of time, it's the quality of time. It's not the length of time, but the quality and what he has installed in me in such a short time. You know, I made him a promise that the next time I come to Jamaica, I will sit at the table and play domino either with you or against you. I am, I am sorry I didn't get that chance, but I hope that one day, when we all get to heaven, I notice they say it's going to be worship 24-7. But that first Sabbath night, when everything is over, I'm going to find his mansion. And I'm going to be sitting at the table, either against him or with him. But either way, we will be there. And so, my word to the family. Read, read, you know, pain and sorrow will come today. But joy is going to come in the morning. I'm asking you to just believe and know that this man is a man of God. Truly a man of God. Because what he did in such a short time, where I'm concerned, is what he, can, he have done for more than you. Because you had time with him. And like I said, my only regret, I just didn't have the time to spend. You know, one of the time I remember I was working on the Sabbath, and he rebuked me on it. And he said, Deacon, you know it's the Sabbath. But my brother, I told him, the work I do is essential. I'm saving lives sometime. And he understand, but he always remind me it is the Sabbath. And I will always remember him. If I have to go out on a call, I'm going to say, my brother, I have to go. So sleep on, my friend. Hope to see you in the new Jerusalem. Also, thank you very much, Deacon Seaton. Is Minister Jermaine O'Connor and Brother Sherwin here? Oh, beautiful. They're coming from Church of God, Seventh day, Zion House of Elohim. Put your hand together for them for me, please. Praise the Lord, brethren. 
You know, as Deacon Seaton said, pastor would have wanted praise and worship. I agree with that 100%. Um, I have known Pastor McDermott shorter than Minister O'Connor, so I will go first. <laughs> All right, so sometime in 2019, before COVID hit, I met Pastor at Charlotte Primary because our kids go to the same school. My twins and Nathan had just started going to the school. And so he actually met my wife first, and he gave me a cherry tree to give her. That cherry tree is growing. It's about this height now. He was so humble and unassuming that when he first told me that he was a pastor, in my mind I said, sure, pastor, no, sir. Because, I mean, when I said humble, this man will do the simplest things, the most menial jobs for persons, right? At the time, I never knew any pastor because right now, the pastors that I see, them on the pulpit basically are show off on the people I mean at the church. You understand? Not him. Not him. That was not him. He was humble. Humble to the point that my car was overheating and I took it to the mechanic. And the mechanic had it there running, couldn't find a problem. And one morning when I drove into Shorthood, he came to me and said, you know, water leaking under your car. And I said, yeah, my car got the mechanic and the mechanic do know what is the problem. And he said, fly the bonnet. And he fly the bonnet and within two minutes he was able to tell me where the problem was. Right? That was the type of man he was. Right? I mean, after that, I simply, COVID hit, so we forgot and we lost touch with each other. And after COVID and school, physical, face-to-face -face school started back, um, we met up and we chatted. And I even forgot that he told me that he was a pastor. <laughs> right? Um, I, I, usually, I wasn't working at the time, so I would hang out at the school sometimes. Sometimes I would be there for the entire day. And when his wife was away, he would be away. He would be there as well. And we began a closer bond. And we would sit there under the plum tree and speak for hours about God. Right? Um, I only knew at the time a form of godliness. And brethren, that is not good. Right? A form of godliness is far from the truth. Right? He sat me down and he explained to me, and I listened, and my wife was good. Trust me, my wife is here, and we were, I mean, because, I guess because of COVID, and we were seeing too much of each other. We were at each other's throats, and we would war and fight and not speak to each other. And, you know, I went home, even though I went home, and I said, you know, I met this man of God, right? Because she said she wanted somebody to speak with. And I said, I met this man of God. And I said, you know him too, man, the same gentleman that gave you the cherry tree a couple of years ago. And she decided to come to school with me one day. And she sat with him. And I left them alone in the car. And she sat with him. And they talked for her. She was supposed to go somewhere. And she forgot that. She was supposed to go to Kingston Bookshop to get some books. And she totally forgot. She was just there going on and on and talking. And that's the type of person he was. He sat and he listened and he was able to help her because the Lord had told her that he was going to send her a man of God. And that was the man of God that, she, that the Lord sent. Right? Um, as a well, a couple months into that, I decided to, got, to get baptized. And this December is one year. My, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My, my wife got rebaptized the same time as I did, and subsequent to that, two of my sons, um, I have seven kids, two of my sons decided, Kyle is here, and the twins are now, you know, deciding that, yes, they want to go that route as well. Yeah, so, I mean, thank the Lord for Pastor McDermott. All right, as a church, do. Yeah, he wasn't afraid to rebuke you. I've gotten it myself. 
and I was upset at first. <laughs> he ran a tight ship, brethren. Right? We could always expect a call if we're absent for whatever reason there is to find out how, how it is. If, if it's that you're in need, I live in Stony Hill, brethren, and I think it's far. And pastor drive all the way from Mapen to come and check me in Stony Hill. You understand? That's the type of person he is. Right? Um, the day that we, we, we got baptized, I pray that the plants are still there. He got some plants from me and some pepper trees, and that is how we would share. And that is one of the reasons. He was into farming. I love plants, so we would discuss plants and where we could get what and so forth. All right, and back to um, the tight ship that he ran in the church. Apart from looking after our welfare and the, the distance, no distance was too great. I would often ask him how he did it, because during our long conversations, it would be interspersed with millions of calls. Every minute, the conversation would break, because one person or another would be calling. And trust me, it's not always church people calling him. It's always other persons, all right? Always willing to assist. I can tell you that quite a few persons come to the school, have car problems, and he was always there, willing to help out. You see what I mean? That's the type of person. Most pastors that I know would maybe call somebody to assist. And one of my fondest memories of both him and his wife was when their car was giving problems. It actually broke down on the highway. And trust me, the type of wife she is too, she was there pushing as well. And for that day, the car ended up... Um, off Manningsville Road and a little side road. And I was there with them. And trust me, brethren, if you don't want a wife, you don't want a wife like that. Trust me, at the end of the day, her hands were just as greasy as his was. And they sat there and they bickered, lovingly, of course, you know, but he sat there and he worked on that car. If it was me, I would have just leave it there. He sat there and he worked on the car. He borrowed tools. And all day until 4 o'clock, they were there working on the car. And she would be telling him, try it that way now. And him, him would look, give her a look. And she would smile. You understand? But just to go over again, the type of person he was, he was so humble. You wouldn't, just seeing him, you wouldn't believe either that he was a pastor. All right? One of the things we appreciated about him is that he never held back the truth often telling us the bad things that he did. And trust me, he did some bad things in his lifetime. But not to gloat, but to tell us where he has been and what not to do. Right? He did it as a cautionary tale. Right? And of how great God is. Because the things that he has been through, he should have died a long time ago, Virgin. Right? But God is so great. Right? And the power to change us. If only we would repent of our sins and ask for forgiveness, right? And these are some of the things that he taught us, right? I personally was really looking for him to write the book because I always encourage him. Um, based on the testimonies that he would tell me, I would say, no, man, you need to write a book, man. This would be a bestseller, you know? I was really looking forward to him to write the book. Another thing with Zion House is that no one came there and left the same. No one came there and remained the same. Right? He would teach you how to pray, and he would rebuke you if you don't pray the right way. Right? My prayers were, and my wife's prayers were usually short. <laughs> but we tried to ensure that what he, how he taught us to pray was included in that short prayer. But that is it. My son, Kyle, has done some presentations when I myself didn't think he could have done it. But he was encouraged, and trust me, when you know, say, Pastor, I encourage you. Whenever you're doing anything, and him say, yes, Lord, and praise the Lord, when him give out those outbursts, he just encourages you, say, yes, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> you are doing the right thing. The spiritual growth was always evident because he was that kind of pastor that everyone played a role. Recently, everybody in the church, except for maybe the twins, had to do a presentation. He gave them a topic and they had to present on it. And trust me, 
that's the type of person he was. He wanted you to grow. Um, I've been to several churches over my life, and I would just sit in church. But he ensured that you took part, right? And you, he, he ensured that you grew, right? My wife, very shy. She would not speak. And trust me, when you hear her talk in church and present in church, you wouldn't believe that is the same person. All right? And I just want to thank the Lord for lending him to us for a few moments, for the spiritual guidance he provided, for the Bible knowledge he imparted, the dedication showed, and his professed love for the Lord. He really loved the Lord. He left us with words etched in our hearts and minds, words such as, Stay in the ship or stay in the vessel and ride out the storm and be vigilant. And in closing my part, I would just like to say that there is no repentance in the grave. Absolutely none. So the time is now, brethren. To repent, ask the Lord for forgiveness, and live righteously. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Wow, you know, I'd like to start by saying one thing about Pastor Matt Dermot that always fascinated me, that when he smiled, I could count every teeth in his mouth. <laughs> he had a huge smile. When he started laughing, you can count. <laughs> oh, Oh my God. And uh, I, I can tell you this. I was there through the whole thing. You know, my experience of what transpired is much closer than most of you. It is, it is so ironic. The Wednesday, my wife was in a panic. My phone died early. And she was having problems finding me, calling everybody, asking even the person that I was working with. And to go home and hear my wife arguing with me about where I was and to get a call from my pastor's wife resounding the same information, you know, it really, it really hit me. And... Uh, I can tell you this, I was there and when everything happened, you know, but I give God thanks that before all of that, the Lord shared a lot of comforting information with us, you know, and um, just a few days we were having service and the Lord asked us to open the book of remembrance. <laughs> so ironic. And I can tell you this, and the entire church can tell you this. Pastor Mark was a spiritual bloodhound. Yes. He could pick up your smell once you leave the reservation. Expect a phone call. He pick up your smell. And I can tell you this, if he had to put on one of those radioactive suits to come and get you, he would. If the rescue required him to put on, a, the entire church that he ran can attest to that. If he had to put on one of those radioactive suits to come in the mess that you were in to get you out, he did that. You know, I remember one night I was telling my wife that, you know, because I used to run up and down on missions with Pastor Mark. I said, we were a pair of the stupidest mercenaries you ever find. And we were the only mercenaries that did work and didn't collect. Yes, we did so much spiritual work and never collect one dime. We were the stupidest mercenaries you ever find. And then he, he drew his wife into the madness. <laughs> and she can attest to all the run up and down and going here, rescuing souls. He was about rescuing souls. 
It was his life. That's what he was about. You know? And uh, I, I just want to keep it there. Because there's so much that can be said. I, if, if, if I started talking, then the sun would go down and would still be here. You know? But there is so much that can be said. But I just want to leave us with the note that he was about rescuing souls. I remember one convention, now Pastor Mark was an evangelist. Everything is happening, and can I tell you, he is, pardon my friend, he was the dirtiest person upon the compound. He in dirty from head to toe. Well, busy working, busy fixing this, busy doing that. While everybody else dress up on inside, from head to toe, Pastor Mark was dirty. And I appreciate him for all of that, you know. And so, as we remember him, as a collective unit, because he had ties with a lot of people, both save, unsaved, different, different churches, you know. And I want to remember him as a missionary, a mercenary, and a spiritual bloodhound that was willing to track every cent to rescue their soul. Thank you all. God be with you. Wonderful. Tell it as it is. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, gentlemen, for sharing in this our Thanksgiving service. Uh, I'm Sir Jay in the house. Sir Jay Foxton is not here at this time. In the tribute, we're going to be taking an offering, but I'm just checking. Is the tribute from Pastor Dalkey Moore available? All right, so we'll take that now. Good afternoon, one and all. Greetings to the officiating ministers, to the bereaved family, and to one and all. Blessings on you. It is with great sadness that I come to you this afternoon to speak on the life of our dear brother, Brother Dave McDermott. Um, sometimes even saying the name in regard to the late you know, still sound unreal. Um, I grew up within the family or among the family of the McDermott's. I spent an enormous amount of time, especially in the St. Mary Belt, uh, with persons like his father, Clinton McDermott, in Kingston, Norris McDermott, Sister Byfield there in Geisel, and also in Mosley Hall and other members of the family, Merlin and others within that belt. Um, when I heard of Dave's passing, it, it, it saddened me because it wasn't too long ago that we were on a program and I watched him um, facilitating a class and I shared with him how proud I was of him and his development and his, his, his growth in the Lord and his maturity. I remember Dave as this enthusiastic young man who loved to sing and dance and play the drums. His voice was above everyone else's voice. And it, it, anywhere Dave was, you would know if it was summer camp, 
if it was a crusade, if it was a baptism, anywhere. And if there wasn't a drum present and you would grab a tambourine, then you would still know that Dave was around. I really believe that he has left his mark upon this earth in a positive way. And I speak mainly of his own ministry as a pastor and as a, a chaplain, as someone who worked closely with young people, especially with schools in Spanish Town and in Kingston alongside his wife. I am very, very proud of him and the mark that he has left. And I know is that had his parents been around, they would have been proud of him too. We give God thanks for his life. And we know that based on what we know about him, that one day he will wake up in glory. And so we give God special thanks for his life. And as Job says that he knew, and he knew back then, and we know now that our Redeemer lives. And since our Redeemer lives, we're going to stand with him upon the earth one day. And so, again, it is with sadness, and I offer to you condolences from my family and from my entire family, my wife Rhoda, my son Nathan, and from the entire Moore family, we offer condolence to you. And we pray God's strength upon your life, and we hope that even when things look dark and it seems as if that we're not going to make it, that no one cares and no one understands that you put your trust in Jesus and recognize that he is always in control. May the Lord continue to bless you and may the Lord continue to be with you as you embark upon this new chapter in your life without Dave in it and know that one day he will wake up in glory. God bless you. Put your hands together for the man of God. I like this. I like it. Um, there is a story they always tell us to write about when we're in high school. Topic from rags to riches. And this is a true testament of what it was and what it is now. We are indeed proud of who God has allowed Dave McDermott to turn out to be. And to hear Pastor Dr. Dalke Moore testifying all the way from USA. But the testimony is sure. At this time. Oh, so we're going to do this now. Because I see that she's raring to go. We have dignitary in the house. And I want to pause to welcome among us. We have ministers in the congregation. Pastors, evangelists, missionaries. We pause at this time to acknowledge you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for showing up and just being there, whether by prayer, fasting, whatever it is, the family thanks you for coming. At this time, as you would have heard before, that he allowed himself to be marketable. Of course, God called you, but he not keep you, so not true. Right, and so, when he came one morning to the house, about five o'clock, I see him in a one posh suit. I said, then you tell what that? He said, my sister gone places by God's grace. And so from the society, I want you to help me welcome Dr. Neva Campbell of Global Chaplains Alliance USA. Put your hands together. She's making a presentation to the family. Clap a little better than that, no man. Sure, not because... I stand here in the capacity to represent Global Chaplains Alliance out of the United States. But I stand here too as a friend of Pastor Chaplain Dave McDermott. Chaplain 
Tribute to Chaplain Dave McDermott on his homegoing service from Global Chaplains Alliance, Inc., from Chaplain General Dr. Monica Dennis Jones, GCA, Inc., Lieutenant General Dr. Oswald Smiley, GCA, Jamaica, the Board of Directors of GCA, Jamaica, all GCA chaplains worldwide, including Africa, the Caribbean, the United States of America, the British Virgin Islands, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, and the Middle East. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, we gather here today to remember and celebrate the life of a remarkable man, Chaplain Dave McDermott, a dedicated chaplain whose impact stretched far and wide. His journey in chaplaincy began at Emmett Global Theological Seminary and College, where he graduated in 2021, completing the chaplaincy certificate program. This marked the beginning of a life devoted to serving others with love, compassion, and an unwavering commitment to his calling. Chaplain Dave's dedication to chaplaincy led him to serve under the guidance of Global Chaplain Alliance Inc. Jamaica Limited, GCA. His role as a chaplain with the rank of second lieutenant took him to various places, including Jose Marti Technical High School in St. Catherine. There, alongside fellow chaplains at the general and the general of GCA, he showcased his passion for connecting with others by playing drums, and he could drum, you know what I'm saying? He loved music, right? Playing drums during a devotion with the students. His journey continued as he took on the volunteer chaplain position in schools and in his community, where his genuine love for his work became evident. Interactive sessions with grade six students, thoughtful lesson plans on the benefits of counseling, and the visits to the children, the Bustamante Children Hospital, showcased his deep empathy and care for those he served. It was not merely a role for him. It was a calling and a vocation that he embraced wholeheartedly. In March of this year, Chaplain Dave was installed as the chaplain at Shortwood Practicing Infant and Primary School, where his presence was cherished by students and staff alike. Together with his wife, they became a source of comfort and inspiration, touching the lives of many through their dedicated service in chaplaincy. And if you want to see him do devotion with these children, oh my God, it was to die for. I mean, live for. Please forgive me. You would see him jumping up and down and singing and clapping and you thought he was a child himself full of energy one particular poignant moment in his chaplaincy journey occurred in february of this year faced with the challenges of a new traffic ticketing cost chaplain dave mcdermott stepped in into a situation where a woman felt overwhelmed and defeated. It didn't matter who you were or where you were, this man was going to stop and serve. Through his timely intervention, he provided not just prayer, but a pathway to counseling, turning a difficult moment into an opportunity for healing and growth. The story goes like this. The female driver was given $1,000. She got overwhelmed with all that was happening around her, got out of her car, sat on the roadway, and basically she couldn't bother anymore, she said. She then went back into the car crying and was about to drive away when one of the police covert units came by. The police officers contacted Officer Anne-Marie McDermott and asked for a chaplain. Luckily, her husband, Chaplain Dave McDermott, was able to get there in less than 10 minutes. The operatives handed over the situation to him. 
And if you know him, he took charge well. At the end, she requested and received the prayer and thanked God for the ticket. I don't know who will thank God for $10,000 ticket. But after Dave spoke to her, the ticket was welcome, which opened the door right after for counseling. Further arrangements were made for her to follow up with him in sessions. Chaplain Dave's love for his work was evident in the paragraphs she shared with the organization. Each image captured a moment of joy, compassion, and connection. His smile mirrored the fulfillment he found in serving others. And those photographs that he sent became a visual testament to a life well lived in service to others. As we bid farewell to Chaplain Dave McDermott, let us remember the joy he brought to the lives of others, the compassion he extended in times of need, and the love that defined his chaplaincy. In his honor, let us take a moment to reflect on the impact that we can make by extending a hand of support and kindness to those around us. This poem of encouragement and boundless love. Through chaplains' call, he found his way, touching hearts, brightening many a day. In moments of darkness, he brought forth light, guiding souls through the toughest night. A chaplain so true, his spirit so free, a beacon of hope for all to see. Though we part with him, his legacy stays, stays in our hearts, in our memories, and countless ways. Let his example inspire. Let his kindness bloom as we navigate life's journey facing joy and gloom. Rest in peace, Chaplain Dave knowing that your impact on this world and the lives you touched will endure as a testament to the power and love and service you gave from your fellow chaplain servants. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Campbell. We are honored that our brother was able to serve the nation in such capacity. God bless you. I think Sujay is in the house at this time. So he'll be singing and an offering will be lifted in aid of the church building fund. What I do know in October, when he spoke to me, they started a new ministry. And he was in search of land. He was almost there. And so it would be only appropriate to use this medium to continue the ministry in his honor. And so at this time, may I invite the deacons and Sujay Fox. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, while coming up the hill, I was reflecting and I was remem reminding myself, when did I meet Dave again? And then I remember it was one convention, just joining the choir, the, that's the convention choir. And every night, Sister Alia will be late for for convention. For some, for some reason, when we meet up by sisters, read house, we'd have talk all night, we'd have play all night, and then we can't wake up, we get ready for go church. But God is good, amen? 
in spite of the situation, God is still a good God. My condolence to you, ma'am, and the rest of the family. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances of things I could not understand. Many times in trials, we explore my visions. And my frustration gets so hard of hand. It's then I'm reminded I've never been forsaken. I've never been to the
Just remember when you're standing in the valley of deception and the adversary says it says to be just hold on hallelujah your God will show Praise the Lord. Uh, let us pray. Most righteous Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Almighty Father, for all those who are here. We thank you, O oh God, for all who have stretched their hands and have placed something in these baskets. Mighty Father, right now, we want to give you thanks and we want to bestow upon each and every one of them a blessing of abundance. Almighty Father, we thank you that uh, their storehouses will never be empty, their flower pans will never run out, their cupboards will always have things to sustain them. We pray, Almighty Father, that their job, O oh God of heaven, that they will be promoted they will receive an increase in salary for those who are not working, but yet they give. We ask, Almighty Father, that you will continue to provide for them and you will open doors, Almighty Father, that men cannot close. Mighty Father, we also ask that for those who were not able to give but desired in their hearts to give, that, Almighty Father, you will provide for them as well. Open the floodgates of heaven, Almighty Father, and pour out into their lives. We just want to thank you and we ask that you just do whatever your word declares. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. May I thank Brother Sujay for such a wonderful ministry. Dave was about reaching the lost at all costs. It doesn't matter who you were. He would not be afraid of coming to the rescue. Praise God. And so at this time, is the video tribute from Ja, ja Firewall ready? All right, let's go with it. And the representative from Shortwood practicing, get ready.
People come into our lives for a season and a reason. It was no different for us at Shortwood practicing primary and infant school. We had our season. It lasted for approximately nine years. Years in which we laughed together, we worshiped together, we celebrated together. He gave us a reason. He was our chaplain, or parent, or motivator, or father, or disciplinarian, or helper, or fruitsman, or all-rounder, and or positive vibes. Devotion at the reopening of school will never be the same. Our chaplaincy program will never be the same. Our gate, our kitchen, our library, our corridors, our gazebo, or a car park and or classrooms. And yet today, we do not mourn as he exuded life. So we do today, today we celebrate, not because we are happy he is gone, but because we are happy we shared his season and we had a reason. He put life into everything he did. He was our pastor, McDermott, our chaplain, and he will forever live in our hearts.
if you try to fix more than you bring, if you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain, there's a place for people like Good afternoon, everyone. Just want to say thanks and acknowledge our head boy, Jason Barrett, that that's our head boy. And we just had some junior prefects representing or and the little one representing the student body. We do have parents, colleagues, other colleagues, apart from those you're seeing here. Um, we do have um, friends of our school, persons who work within the perimeters of our school. They're here in support of the family. Up until this time, I have avoided acknowledging the reality because we have just begun to connect he came with 
different life. They were full of exuberance, vitality, and vigor when they came to my office. And I said, Mrs. Mrs. Phillipson Davis, we're excited to bless Shortwood Practicing School. My husband, and she's so passionate, my husband has graduated and he's now a chaplain and he has chosen his son's school to bless and we would like to give our, our full ministry, not just my husband, the family, our full ministry to this school. And I sat in my chair and I just, I just smiled, I just laughed because I, I felt the energy, the electrifying energy generating through the room. And I said, you are welcome. And believe it or not, at the inauguration, the whole family was there. Mr. McDermott could not hold the mic alone. Even, even Dave John was there. And we welcomed him into another area of school life. But the connection that we were making was a personal connection. Because we sat in my office several times and we spoke spoke about the impact that he's making. When he came, I asked him to work through the guidance department at our school. So he worked with the guidance counselor and counselors. But I listened as those who gave their tributes spoke and I now understood why the walls of the guidance department could not contain him. He extended his reach in every area of school life. And when we spoke, we spoke in a happy place. I deliberately did not come in when the casket was open because I, I will forever remember him in that happy place. We're going to continue our journey in that happy place. And I hope that when we meet again, it is before the throne of God to spend eternity together. The team that is here representing the school will be delivering the tribute. I know I was told by a very good friend, so we do have colleagues and friends of the McDermott family, um, I was told by a friend that the song that we're going to sing is a Church of God anthem, so please feel free to sing along with us. We ask the blessed Jesus to hold our hands during this time of bereavement. Please forgive me, I must acknowledge especially our principal. Our principal is here, I don't know how I forgot to say that, um, Mr. Rupert McCoy, please. Very supportive of the school and everything that happens in our school. So thank you very much. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the cry of Calvary.
what I hope. God is good. God is good. Thank you very much. We are, just before you go, Mrs. Hardbart, this is our vice principal, and uh, we have brought for the family, and she will now make the presentation, the book of remembrance uh, that we had stationed in our staff room. And um, you will see the thoughts, the love expressed by the staff and guests of our school. Thank you so much for being a part of our school and we continue to offer our, our support for the family. Have a blessed rest of the day. I hear the choir singing. I'll give you one round of it, everybody. Church of God star. My feeble plea, Lord, alone look down on me. The college is my alma mater, and I'm indeed proud to be associated with you, and that our brother was able to serve. It's what I'm saying, it's what I'm saying, it's what I'm saying. It is not the length of time. It is the quality of your life. Praise God. Amen, amen. My heart mixed up that a life so short-lived had the same impact of his father who lived so many years. So my Dermot family feel good, feel proud to know that, look here man, this young man came. Some people, you know, just come in and do their thing fast and just leave fast and just mash up your heart. And we are thankful that he has been a part of our life. Dave loved Domino. Because when Dave and daddy, as old as daddy was, you know, when they have another sin of a play, Domino is normal. And so people from Domino Club is also here. I tell you, this man, in a matter of, in a matter of status, he was able to sit. Domino people, where are you? After all, after all, it's your time. It's Domino people time. Jesus sat at the riverside. We now sit on a river, but we play a Domino to meet somebody. Put your hands together while they come. Praise God. Good afternoon, everyone. How are y'all guys feeling? Yes, we're here to celebrate our brother, right? Yes. Amen, yes. amen. Yes. As you can see from the TV, you can see us playing Domino with Dave. All right. Here we are giving a little video. Here we are. All right. Great, great. All right, guys, sometimes in life, you know, you meet somebody for the first time, and you said to yourself, you know, what is the connection between you and this person, right? And I, earlier being here, I heard someone, um, I think the speaker before spoke about Osemarty, right? Osemarty is my alma mater. So, you know, sometimes you will realize a connection. I mean, it's so far away that you didn't even know that it's so close. 
So meeting him, you just know that he and this person will click. And that was great. And as Osemata, Alma Mata would have said, Traba Hando Idi Estudiando Paracelo Lumbre Total, it means working and studying to be a total man. And he was a total man. To many, based on every aspect of all the tributes that's gone before us, spoke about him. That was great. And I respect him. Just meeting him, you know, maybe like within a year. And he come like say, me know him for like several years. And that shows gratitude, that shows connection, that shows wisdom, that shows like a bigger brother. He always look at me and said, Fabian, little man, you're good. I say, yeah, man, I'm a good man. And for Dave McDermott, Dave McDermott, a person who we as the Domino crew with him would normally say, and what we call him? Flipping. What we call him? Flipping. And they normally look on you and say, yo, you can't play Domino? You can't play Domino? And you just know, say, your hand just get mashed up on him, say that. And that's the man who we can look on who bring vibes to Domino for our pastor, for our brother, our bridging, of just giving the rating and respect him to the max. I can tell you, he did so much as a, as an individual and as a father and as a brother and a pastor, we have just give him the praise. And you know, rate him. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I am the newest member to the Domino Club. And when I just came there, nobody wants to play with Domino with me. Nobody. And it, it was only Pastor Dave who come and say, All right, teacher, come with me. Come with me. All right, let us fix them. And so I played and I played and I get them. And even those who don't want, who didn't want to play Domino with me, me and Pastor I McNeil mean, was seven Domino. Certain <laughs> individual up here, seven Domino. So you know what that person don't play in that evil? Advise us, he encourage us as a young man, and I am very saddened to know that he's not here with us. But I know he's gone, but he will never be forgotten for me. All right? When you talk about an infectious smile, that was Pastor. We always strike up some songs because he was a very good singer. When you say sing, you say pastor. You've been in the storm. It seems like forever. Your nights of confusion has been. Oh, my. 
Shall we worship the Lord? Can we worship the Lord? My apologies. Praise the Lord again, Virgin. I know that in this moment we are grieving, but for the life that Dr. Dave McDermott would have lived would have impacted us in some positive way. More than we could ever imagine. But before I begin with my portion, I'd like to share a scripture with you. From the book of Ecclesiastes 3, reading from verse 1 to 4. And there is a season, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And there is a season appointed for everything and a time for every delight and event or purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Today might be our day that we mourn with the family loved ones, with those who would have known Dr. Dave McDermott. But remember, we will not mourn forever, because there will be a day that we will have joy, we'll have that smile on our face again. So we don't want to sit down in our chairs and mourn all the time, forever. Because that's not what Dr. McDermott would have wanted. Eight years ago, I would have met Mr. McDermott at Australia Road. And he sort of burst a little bubble for me, in a sense, you know, because I wanted to do things a little discreet. I'm really not a talkative person, so I don't talk a lot. And I was there with my girlfriend then, which is now my wife. So when I was in church, you know, Dr. McDermott is not just an ordinary man. He's not just a man of God. He is a spirit filled man of God. Because the spirit was right that day, that Sabbath when I was in church, you know. And my intentions, I wanted to, you know, make it known that I wanted to marry this young lady. But I guess I got a little bit cold feet or the butterflies came in and, you know, I sort of laid back a little bit. And Virgin, if you know the 
Dr. Matt Dermott because I have to honor him even though he's not here. But when he came at the lunch table and he started talking and he said, Vanji, <laughs> I tell you, no, man. <laughs> I sense a wedding, you know. I sense a wedding. And he started talking and he went on and went on and went on and he would say, but what a nice good chap. Boy, a nice young man, eh? What a nice young man. And from there on, we exchange conversations over and over and over again. Now, I wish my mother was well and could be here at this moment. Because there was a time that Pastor McDermott would see me and he would ask me, Brother Mark, how you do? You know, look so, you know, what, what is it? And I would have shared with him that my mother is not well. She is ill and we try all sorts of things. All over, we went to the doctor. And he said to me, all right, tell you what. Tomorrow we're going over to pray for her. Sorry. And I, I was like, what, what, this man is serious. He said, yes, man, you drive? I said, yes. He said, well, look, we're going over to Portland. In the morning, we're going over to Portland. And we are going to pray for your mother. And... Uh, Got up that Sunday morning and get myself ready. I don't remember exactly where I picked him up. I think it was at church. Not so fortunately, his wife, his prayer bucketive, his prayer warrior was not there. However, we still went over to Portland. On our journey to Portland, we talked, we talked, we talked, we talked about everything. And I tell you, a man of God, spirit-filled man of God, right? Because in every conversation that we would have on our journey over there to Portland, there was always some scripture for him to mention. There was always something to make mention. There was always a reference from the Bible. And when we eventually reached my parents' house in Portland, Buff Bay Valley, for those who know it, Balcaris, Molletal District, don't think a lot of persons or anybody here might be familiar. However, when we got inside, I introduced him to my father, and we went straight around to the room to where my mother was lying down in bed. Now, my mother... She has Alzheimer's. She's also diabetic. And, you know, there are times that she'll remember things, and there's a time that she'll not remember anything at all. And there's a time that she'll behave a particular kind of way that you want to run away. And when Pastor McDermott went in, he said, mm, something all right. And he started to speak in the other language, the unknown. And he went from room to room, round and round and round. And he came back and he, he held my mother. And he started praying and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed up a storm. Believe me, people would have been passing on the roadway because we live on the main road. People would have been passing and hearing the praying the ministry that is taking place inside that house. Because that wasn't any normal prayer. A man who loves to worship. I remember him for one of the things that at Australia Road, that he would just jump around the drum set and started playing the drum. He was musically inclined. And that man will take a song from the lowest point and take it 
to the highest mountain there is. That's how I know him. A worshiper. A spirit-filled man of God. Now, friends, family, well-wishers, all a part of a risky business. And when I say risky business, it means the fact that you're alive today and you live to see another day, you are to be thankful. There are persons, not just Dr. McDermott I'm talking about, you know, there are persons who would have wished for one more day to stand among the living. They're not here today. Families, friends, well wishers, let us change our attitude because I grew up in a Sunday church, you know. I grew up in the Sunday church and I remember one Sunday the pastor was up giving his message, man, and he saw a sister and he said, sister so-and-so, why haven't you been saved? Because you're so active in the church. Pastor, I'm not ready yet. And the pastor said to her, don't wait too long. Do not wait too long. What are you waiting for? That was the question the pastor asked. What are you waiting for? Pastor, I'm not ready yet. And I remembered that lady did not live to the following Sunday. She did not give her life to God before she passed. And we are living today and we are happy. We are sad. We have joy times. We have sad times. Families, friends, beloved ones. We do not know our time. We do not know the day, the minute, nor the hour. I was greatly saddened at the news at the passing of Dr. McDermott. And I will say to you that as a serving member of the army for 14 years, I've come across many, many risk challenges. I've seen the unappreciable things. And I, my dear sister there can attest to that because of the line of work that we're in. I serve with the Jamaica Defense Force Airwing. And there are times that we're transporting patients from one hospital to the other and seeing somebody lying down, almost taking their last breath, is nothing easy to look at. People sitting down, people in unbearable pain. And the reason why I said that we are in the risky business, even the children going to school is at risk. Because the moment they have to leave your household, that would say the place of safety, and they go out there, they go out into the unknown. One second. I, I will have to cut it real short. <laughs> but to the family, I leave this verse with you from Romans 14 verse 8 if we live we live for the Lord and if we die we die for the Lord so whether we live or we die we belong 
to the Lord. God bless you. I can tell you that Pastor Matt Dermott was a very, very influential man because I've been married to this man for seven years, and trust me, he has never attended a funeral and spoke so much in his life. <laughs> so, with that said, I want to give um, special thanks to Sister Matt Dermott for allowing us to share. When I looked at the program, the last hymn that we we're going to sing, that was a song that I opened with for my wedding and Brother Dave's hallelujah was the highest hallelujah when it rang out in the church. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And that's what I want to remember. I want to remember that hallelujah. And I hope that hallelujah remains with you as well. Thank you very much. Evangelist McClary wanted to preach inside here. But you're going to preach at the church, all right? Good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Lady McDermott has asked me to... There are some officers in the house, I was told. Let me see if I can read them something here. Senior Superintendent of Police, Miss Jacqueline Combs. Where's that person? Thank you. Uh, let me see if I can read this one. Someone in her name. But the police come out to support and police who want to say thank you. Can we not by the car can up and get trouble? Thank you for coming to support. At this time, I, them say if you want to know your friend play drunk. And so she now play drunk. The situation is real. And so we thank you all for coming to the rescue. 52 years. Make we hear what gonna. At this time, it will be done. We're going to hear it go through. Okay, then exchange position. So the daughter read this morning. The mommy is now coming. The big sister. Come, honey bunch. Sister Williams is coming at this time. God has really strengthened them. Praise God for Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Alia. Good afternoon, everyone. This has been one of the hardest eulogy to put together because of writing it in the past tense. But here goes. I could almost do without this eulogy listening to all the tributes. Abraham Lincoln said, in the end, it is not the years in your life that counts, but the life in your years. And that what Dave John did. He lived. Dave was born on the 7th of November, 1970, in the quiet district of Mosley Hall, St. Anne, to parents Clinton and Margaret McDermott, both deceased. Sometimes in life we wonder about a person's life and character, and we often attribute it to the way they were taught. However, I put it to you today that the meaning has a, the name has much meaning. Because Dave means beloved. John means God is gracious. And I can attest to the fact that he was loved by his family and friends and even those he met for the very first time. He had many near-death experiences in which he survived, reflecting the graciousness of God. Dave's early educational journey began at the St. George's Infant School and then transitioned over to the St. George's All Age. He did not complete his time there as shortly after the family migrated to Rose Street in St. Mary. There he was enrolled in the Goshen Primary School. 
He completed his remaining three years of primary education and went on to Taki Secondary School, now Taki High School. While at Goshen, he was a disciplined child for the most part. There were times he would get himself into scrapes because he was one not to be, he was one to be seen. He was not one to be seen and not heard. Wherever he was, you would know he was around. Dave loved singing and acting. And I am sure if, were to per, if he was to pursue the Hollywood dream, yes. he would have won many Oscar awards. Amen. There was never a shortage of audience as our family was large. And we became his cheerleaders yes. while he entertained us. Yes. As a young man, Dave was very practical and hands-on in everything in everything he did. He did not achieve any great accolades or letters in front or behind his name, yes. but that did not take away from the person he later became. Amen. And by your association with him, you would never know. Yes. During his childhood, Dave would receive numerous beatings Amen. from our dad because he was always fabricating stories. One of his stories in particular, I recall, he came home very late from school. But well, those were the time when dad was very strict. You do not yes. idle. Yes. School is over, you get home from school. Yes. And so he was about five or six hours late. Yes. And we were very worried and mom was on the verge of tears. When he finally came home, he shakenly recounted that he, along with some of his friends, were held up by gunmen. <laughs> we were shocked listening to this story. My father, of course, did not buy it, and so he went to investigate. When he came back, there was no truth to the story. He just stopped with his friends who were doing Christmas carol rehearsal. And of course, dad gave him a sound whipping and admonished him that the beating was for the lie. That's right. Dave lived in a normal family where everyone had their duties and his was to help with the animals. And I do believe that propelled him in that direction that he used it as his livelihood. Amen. Dave loved farming. Yes. Dave accepted the Lord at an early age and showed great potential in the work of the Lord. He was blessed with the gift of evangelism. Amen. Wherever he went to preach the gospel, yes. Yes. souls would be added to the church. He wasn't perfect. He would oftentimes rub people the wrong way and also the right way. Yeah. But that did not take away from his admirable qualities. Yeah. They outweighed the bad. Amen. He never harbored a grudge. Yeah. Had a pleasant personality. Somebody spoke about when he laughed and you could see every teeth in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. And that was his personality. He was kind. He would give you his last dollar if he thought you needed it more than him. And he was very helpful. Somebody also alluded to that. Yes. When you are working and Dave comes along, you would think he was the contractor or something because he takes over the work completely. And so... I recall him spending some time with me when he became an adult. And as, you know, young men, a lot wouldn't want to wash the dishes and all of that. But Dave would wash the dishes. He would help in the house. He would help on the farm. He would do just about anything. And he could iron. Yes. 
When he irons a piece of clothes, it is well done. There were those who called him a rolling stone because he was all over the place. But the good news is, wherever he rolled, the gospel was preached. And he made an impact. That was how he met his wife, Anne Marie Rochester. He rolled into Pastor Andrew's Pastor Andrew Sherwood's church. And there they became, they met, they became friends and fell in love. Amidst many obstacles and discouragement, they underwent intense counseling and became man and wife on the 30th of August, 2011. His wife shared a few of her experiences of the prophetic declaration of how she became his wife and even the very birth of their son, DJ Jr., and his ministry that followed. I must say he was an excellent husband and father. He never shirked his responsibilities towards his family. This rolling stone finally gathered moss. He did not get to see the allotted years. But the brief time he was here, he did more than some of us will ever do in our lifetime. Under the influence and help of his wife, he went into full-time ministry for the Lord. He pursued and received his doctoral degree of divinity on May the 27th, 2023 and would have started a Bachelor of Science in Psychology in January 24. He was the chaplain for the Shortwood Practicing and Infant Primary School up to the time of his passing. During the COVID-19 pandemic, his ministry went global via live streaming and social media platforms. This reiterated Jesus' command in St. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Go in to the therefore and teach all nations, even to the end of the world. This paid off as he, along with his wife, acquired a place of worship at number 4 Parasia Avenue, Kingston 10. Here, members were added to the church by water baptism, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The name of the church is Church of God's Seventh Day Zion House of Elohim. He was called, he was anointed, and he was appointed by God. And it was no wonder that he had to contend with a lot of obstacles, both personal and otherwise. Dave was never just about going to church. He believed that anything and everything could be used to bring the gospel to the world yes. and glory to the Most High God. Amen. And so he formed the Vives Domino Club, where retired public sector individuals would meet for dominoes and an occasional word and prayer as the need arose. Amen. I fondly recall the story of him using the game of domino to get a group of young men to attend church. And the story goes, he was coming from church on this Saturday evening when he saw a group of guys playing domino. He, of course, stopped, took off his jacket, introduced himself, and asked for a game. With the condition being, if he dropped a six love, they had to be in church the next week. Not knowing he was a whiz, they readily agree. And whether it was by divine intervention or skills, they got the six love. And true to their promise, they were in church the following Sabbath. One became a member and still is up to this day. With all his faults and failures, we loved him just the same. Amen. 
For that's what true love yes. is. Yes. Loving in spite oh. of. The word of God never tells us how we would live this yeah, life. Yeah. What it tells us is how we ought to live Amen. so that we can gain eternal life. There is much to say about Dave, but those who truly knew him and loved him will agree that it is not in the abundance of words yes. and accolades yes. That an individual's worth Amen. is measured, Amen. but it is in the action yes. that speaks volumes. Amen. The memories that we hold dear of a life well lived, though briefly, cannot be erased. Amen. Irving Berlin so aptly puts it, the song has ended, yes. but the melody lingers on. Dave left behind his beloved wife, Anne-Marie, his darling son, Dave John Jr., Amen. two stepdaughters, Hannah and Ruth Ann, his siblings, three brothers, and seven sisters, Amen. one aunt, one uncle, a host of nieces, nephews, Cousins, church family, and friends. Lord, yes. we cannot thy purpose see, but all that's well, amen. that's done by thee. Amen, amen, amen. Rest well, amen. brother. Yes. I think we can do a little bit better for her. That took strength. It took strength. God bless you. And her support team was excellent. God bless you. Well done. At this time, the wife, Anne Marie, Lady Anne Marie, Dr. Anne Marie McDonald, will do her reflection. This will be followed by a song of meditation by Sister Joy and company. And the next voice you'll hear after that will be of the minister, Pastor Newton Fowler. God bless you. Let us lift holy hands and worship Hallelujah. the Lord. Let us lift holy hands and worship the King of Kings. We do not mourn as those that have no hope. Because we have a hope that make it not a shame. And we know that we shall see him again. I sat there and I reflect on my posh, my Big Mac, my honeybee. There's a movie that is called Love and Basketball. For us, it was love and ministry. Evangelist Leonor Mitchell sitting there knew even when Dave John was days old, we climbed hills in wet rains to save lives because the expediency of ministry comes with sacrifice. And I was there. Brethren, no one else could have married Dave McDermott but me. Because I am as mad as him. I remember Evangelist Mitchell said, Anne Marie, you can't do that. You just have baby. The stitches are still in. I said, Isn't there a cause? Mish, isn't there a cause? He was my best friend. He, what we talk about everything, even his exes. We talked and we laughed about everything. I was telling Sister Mark this morning that when I saw him, the first person that prophesied that I was going to marry that man was my eldest daughter. She said to me, Mommy, is Vanji you going to marry Trino? I said, Me? He shot and shine and he mowed long. I said, Me? Because he was the posh. 
Everything about him must be glittering. But after a while, honey came from those lips. Wisdom came from those lips. And love, unconditional, came from those lips and arms. Superintendent McFarlane sitting there, I remember I told her once, I said, I am a spoiled wife. I am a spoiled wife. My husband ensured that he loved me as Christ loved the church and would give himself for the church. Some may be wondering, then I hope she loves him as she now, but because he has fought a good fight. He has finished his course. And he has kept the faith. And henceforth is laid up for him. A crown of righteousness. I remember my late father-in-law said. After you have done all. My dear. Stand. And stand. Hallelujah. And stand again. And when you have stood again. Withstand. Uncle Norris, when he told me about the church of God, the speckled bird, I said, Uncle, who is going to make it? He said, my daughter, strive that you may make it. I said, okay, Uncle, I've got many a kisses and hugs from that man because his house was minutes away from where I worked at South Tower. So lunchtime, I would steal away from anti-corruption, Miss Liebert. I would steal away and go and have lunch with uncle. And sometimes he's reminding me, because talks are sweet. When you're talking about the gospel, it is so sweet. And he has to remind me that, remember lunchtime. You got to go back to work. But Mr. Reed at the time, who was my supervisor, would understand. He didn't know where I was coming from 10 and 15 minutes late, but he would understand. Our last Sabbath at church, I love to write, but that Sabbath I wrote on the quarterly page so much like I've never written before, Vanji. I remember he said to us, those of us who are online and sitting in the congregation, write what I tell you. He says, realize that things may not always go as you plan it. Aye, hallelujah. Then he went into an acronym trust. And when he got to the U, he said, understand that you may not always understand. And he repeated it frivolously. But he says, repeat it until it becomes a part of you. Repeat it until it's soaked in your soul. And we repeated it. I have prayer shawl and oils that came in from Jerusalem for him. And he said, he, he used those things when he's doing ordination or appointment or special anointing on persons. And he said to me, get it for me baby girl and I got it and he did not ask for the shawl alone he said I need the headpiece and he fell on his knees and he prayed for every single person that was online and in church and then he prophesied sister McLaren to every one of us and he says write what I tell you to write for all of you I'm sorry for who didn't write. But I wrote everything that he said. And when he was finished, he got up. And he started to sing. Lord, take me as I am. Lord, take me as I am. My own.
did not know what God was doing. But I remember Mrs. Young from Shortwood called me the Sunday after the incident. And she said, you know, I was speaking to Chaplin. And he told me that he wasn't coming next week, Wednesday. And I was saying to him, sir, remember that you have some boys. And he said to her, do not get into God's business. I'll not be here, but I will see you. Hello? I'll not be here, but I will see you. No, me and Mac talk about everything. My mother-in-law used to tell us that we chat in church too much because everything we talk and pinch each other and poke each other. But he did not tell me that he would not be going for chaplaincy that Wednesday. But I know that he's led by the Spirit. And if he told me that he's not coming in, I would force him or push him or try to find out. I question God. And I question God. And I question God. And I question God. And a message came to us online the Friday night from Canada while we were in service on prayer meeting. And I said, yes, Lord, I thank you. He answered, praise the Lord. You know when the Lord gave you a song? The Lord gave me a song. Because he's my husband now. Hello? Hello? He's my husband now. I got work to do for God. There's no other madman out there like Dave McDermott. To drive from Clarendon to Port Antonio every Sabbath morning. Oh, hallelujah. And got there before the members of the church. His nephew Avier is sitting there. And you can't be late. And we were doing ministry from Santa Cruz to Port Antonio. And if Bap, I don't get there off. I work Monday to Friday. Sabbath I'm at church. And Sunday is Macedonia call day. You're cooking the rice and peas. And Maki said, baby, baby girl, I just got a call. I said, where? He said, Chilani. I, I just kick off and put on another shoes. And I used to have a go bag. A black skirt, a black top, two underwears and something for Dave John. And we're heading out. Because I don't know, sometimes, Missionary Mitchell will tell you, we're in Spring Village for one whole week. I have to go to the convenience store and buy underwears. Because Monday, catch me, we went for Sabbath church, and we have all night prayer meeting. Eight souls. You're in ministry. It takes sacrifice. Denying you for the purpose of God. Rolling stone, my sister-in-law said, I rolled with him. And I rolled with him. And I rolled with him. And sometimes we have tire bursts. All sorts of something happened, but we rolled together. We pushed cars together. We took out transmission out of the car and put it in back. We hold hands over the car. Miss Kadna, when no mechanic say they got in bed. And Holy Ghost taught us how to put in the transmission in the car. Glory to God. Hello, you hear Brother Sang talk? We put in the parts because the mechanic say he can't manage. And I said, Maki, push the boat there, there so. And he said, but baby girl, it no look like it I got fit. I said, but Maki, yeah, you know if you fit the boat the best. Push in the boat. <laughs> yes, man. That's how we reason together. Praise the name of Jesus. And so God give me a song. Sister Alia. And he promised me never to leave me nor forsake me. I wanted I tell Maki, I said, anywhere I go, I carry you. And any, anywhere I go, I'm going to push you because you're bright. And I wanted him to do a bachelor's in psychology and counseling in January, next month. 
Because I'm qualified already to do the master's. So I said, I want you to do the bachelor's. We're going to do the master's together and graduate with our doctorate in that together. That is how you handle a husband when you love him. Hello? God didn't give him a nine to five, you know, because he had to do his work. But when we go to shop, he has bank cards in his pockets. And he was paying, praise the name of Jesus. Virtuousness comes with humility. So I get up early in the morning. I hear somebody talking. Shout would say he was a fruits man. Yes, man. I start a new business with $3,000. I make you laugh. If he never laugh after you, shame. I got up the day and I said, Maki, I'm going to start a business, you know, because we have church now. So we need more resource. Him say, how much capital I have? I said, $3,000. And he laugh until him drop out the set and roll. I went downtown. This is the birth of Healing Pot, Restaurant and Delights. Principal Lester, God bless you. $3,000, one peg of melon, one small pine, half pound of grape. Two kiwi and two American apples. And when I start to cut, Maki stand up and so him stand up and I called my daughter. I said, ask my son-in-law to make some labels for me. Because we're not PR, PR, we're not Fenke, Fenke. We are the a business we are on. Three thousand dollars. And so that lady down there, she happened to see me with a dish one day and she said, Those are beautiful. Police, I'm going to go do a little, little course. Because I had gone to heart and learned presentation and so, you know. And when she saw it, she fell in love with it. I am now on Friendship Primary's inventory. Hello? When I pick up my check for my 50, I make, mm, I make, mm, I make, mm, 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 thousand dollars. But just fun with them, say I could three thousand dollars. Visionaries. And he, he was so, even though he eat out the pine and he eat out the fruit sometime when, when we're trying to fix the fruits then. But that was our vision. Healing pot, restaurant and the lights. And so every morning, on the way, I drop off an igloo this time. Full of fruits. I'm not telling you how much in there because I'm going to start multiplying my money. <laughs> but every morning, I drop off my igloo. I start with a little igloo like this. And the business expand. And I had to buy two igloos so that when I drop off, when I pick up the other one, and I suspect that I may need, because the ministry now is asking that it be permanent and a day is going to be mandated for fruits in the school. Hallelujah. Thank God for healing part. Bridging, I love my Big Mac, you know, I love my honeybee. And so, if we had occasions to go out, I will wear a next. I would, I would do second wear. But my posh, he might forget something brand new, spanking new. Because when, who oh know oh no, Maki? When Maki walk out, you know, so Maki walk out. Yes. I had to make him look good because if, he, if he's not looking good, I'm not looking good either because we are one. I said to him, I said, don't make your head hurt you. I said, as long as I am alive and God is providing, you are provided for. I'm going to give you a joke. I remember when we added the master bedroom and we went into courts. And he was going to the double bed. And I said, Mark, where are you going? I said, yeah, I'm a king of my house. I said, come down here. So there are some beds in courts that they put, don't lean and don't sit on them. They are called king sites. Cursing over. Mm, mm, mm. I said, Mark, I said, when you preach, and you do spiritual work and you do ministry and your body pop down and mash up when you lay down in your bed when night come and you roll the bed must hug you and caress you 
Me say them, them baby girl, then I hope, me say, is you paying for it? Me say it's not paying for it. Me say you must live the best, eat the best, wear the best, go the best, all the time. The servant of God who prophesied our marriage, Uncle Norris, he said one thing to me, he said, he is to stand in ministry for God. You are his coach. And he said to me, you understand what I'm saying to you, my daughter? I said, yes, uncle. He, says, this is, he said, this is you. And this is him. You are to catch him. I am happy that it, I got the honorable, prestigious, privileged opportunity to catch the man of God. A lot of people knew of him, they didn't know him. But I am very blessed to have gotten the chance to know him. He kept me young and fresh and I kept him the same. I am happy that I knew him. And nothing was too good for me to give to him. Praise the name of the Lord. I ensured that he was never lacking by the grace of Almighty God. We had businesses that we operated. And he was the in-charge man of those businesses. When the proceeds come in, we put it down and we prove it and we say, all right, what are we going to do now? And that's how we handle things. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me, musicians. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me, A ship upon a sea. Hey, thou who rulest wind and waters, stand by me in the midst of tribulation. Stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. When the host of hell are saved, and my strength begins to fade. Lost a battle, stand by me in the midst of faults and failures. Stand by me. We are faults, you know. In the midst of faults and failures. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. Hey!
some folks don't understand. <laughs> Thou who knowest. Thou knowest. Thou who knowest. <laughs> So when I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. God, my kingdom didn't have to rub me out right this knee again, you know. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. I'm going back there. When I've done the best I can. Some folks don't understand. Thou who knowest, Gary, thou who knowest, thou who sowest, thou who knowest. gonna stand he's gonna stand Good afternoon, everyone. I want to extend condolences on behalf of Pastor Andrew Dean Sherwood and the Seventh-day Church of God, Pillar and Ground of the Truth, 30 Ricketts Crescent, to the family and friends of the late. I know him as Evangelist McDermott. He was a guy that was full of life, full of life, spirited, and always upbeat. And so to the family, I... Hope that you'll take comfort in this song. When you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in, your eyes, I will try. Oh 
give him praise. You know, as I sit here and I listen and I watch, I was lost to the fact that we're at a funeral service. Because it was just a celebration of praise to God. You know, I get to know this young man as we had done chaplaincy together. You know, today people date online. You don't know the individual, but you're dating, so you have online dating. So I met him online, so I dated him online. And I tell you, I thought we were in a class, but this man had a spiritual oomph about him. He, he get these Holy Ghost moment in class, and I said, calm down, this is cool we're in. <laughs> Not church, but it's a man that was filled with the Spirit. So I bring condolence from my wife and family to the McDermott family this afternoon. God understands, because he had a son who had died. So he know what death is. And I stop by to tell you that that was not in the plan of God. It is a strange act, an evil act. And that's why he came to remind us that we will rise if we die in him and live the way he has created us to live. For another few minutes, I want to talk to us, because we, we already heard of the man. We, 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 we know the life he lived. I pray that we take a page from his life. So we talked about him. So now what about you? What about me? Let me, let me do something here for a second. I'm going to ask our uh, moderator just to read. I want every one of us to listen carefully. I just want you to read just this line. Sunrise, November 7, 1970. And I said, dash, sunset, November 9, 2023. I think she's filled with the spirit. She's filled with the spirit. Because nowhere that we go, we hear anyone talk about the dash. We talk about sunrise and sunset. We talk about the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun. But no one talks about the dash. And I stop by to tell you this morning that sunrise doesn't count. And sunset does not count. The dash is what makes a difference. I have several drum drive here with different colors. It represent each and every one of us in here. When you stick one of this into your computer hard drive, it reads and it contains and it, and it stores information that can be used against you. We thought sometimes we can delete from our computer what we don't want no one knows, but believe me, nothing can be deleted if you put it in. So here it is, we are seated here today and we are looking at our sunrise, the day we are born and the day we die, and we don't talk about the sunset. So I stop by to talk to you for a few minutes about the dash. Your drum drive. What counts? What will be reviewed? Friends, you must be born again. It's not about a question. It's Bible states that you must be born again. So the sunrise that we have is good. We have no choice about that sunrise. Some of us born in families that we don't want it to be a part of, but hey, 
tough luck. You had no choice. But you must be born again is filled with choices. The day you're born physically, you have no business in it. But the day you're born again, you have all the choice in it. And Nicodemus, according to John, went to Jesus and said, what must I do? And I hear somebody sing this afternoon or this morning and the song, and it comes to a point and says, hush, somebody is calling my name. Oh, my Lord. What shall I do? I start by to answer the question for you. You must be born again. The fact that born again is to have a different attitude. A different lifestyle. You know, I returned, I came to the island and I learned of the killing of a baby, a seven 10 month old baby. I don't know if I get it correctly, but 10, more, 10 months. A gunman shot, put bullets in. Oh my God. And I was angry. But because I'm born again, I had to pray for the gunman. Because he needs Jesus. The country needs Jesus. The politician needs Jesus. You talk about your labor right? Oh, look at you. You talk about your pain pee? Oh, look at you. What you need is Jesus. Because being a labor right, a PMP ain't do no good for you. But Jesus, you need to be born again. You need a new attitude, a new lifestyle. Friends, there's a day coming when everything that we have done in secret, the drunk driver will be pulled out in the courts of heaven. What you have done and thought you only you and who have done it know about it is recorded. And the Bible says it's recorded with terrible exactness. So you can fool yourself all you want. It's coming up again. So I just stop by to tell you that as we hear about the man McDermott and the life that he lived, he had no opportunity to change anything at this point. But thank God you were invited because we have the opportunity to make some changes. The beauty about God is that when he deletes our sin is being deleted because his blood is so powerful that when he forgives us, he washed us white and snow and we are born anew. I stop by to tell you this afternoon that you need Jesus. No matter what it is, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, you need Jesus. Only Jesus can make a difference. My friends, I invite you to understand that there's no other way out of this troubled life than to have a relationship with Jesus. You know, there is a judgment day coming. A day coming when our lives will be reviewed. And there is a verdict. Guilty. I pray to God that I, I'm not too much concerned about you right now, but I pray to God that I, when I stand guilty, that he will stand up and say, my blood, my blood has made a difference for him. Because we were born in sin, shaping iniquity. Our attitude is to do wrong. 
But when we choose Jesus, he gives us an attitude to live in the spirit and not in the flesh. A new life in Jesus we need. Can you imagine somebody saving you? I heard of the missionary work and the missionary work that our dear beloved belated have done and carried out. Jesus had left glory, the splendor of heaven, to save a wretch like me. And if I, you don't mind me adding you to it, a wretch like us. Why? Because he loved us. When you love somebody, you will go out and you will do things for them. I sat by to tell you this afternoon that your life matters. Where you live, your life must make a difference. Is it that your neighbor is miserable or are you unkind? Because wherever you live, wherever you live, wherever you work, and you talk about people are unkind or miserable, check yourself. Because love brings on love. A smile will bring on a smile. So check yourself as individual. If you are living in Christ, you'll make a difference where you are. I know the time is spent, but I just want to bring you one more information. It is important to understand that no man knows when their number will be called. Now, I've been to the bank, and I realize there's a system of banking here. You go in the bank, and they give you a number. And your number must be called before you go to the teller or the, the teller. You can't just get up and go and say, well, this is my number. You have to wait until it's called. Pastor Dr. McDermott's number has been called. When will yours be? Now, as I sit in the bank, I await, sit patiently, and I wait my number to be called. And I have an understanding, close, close understanding when it will be. Because when there is 521 is called, I know the next one, 522, is me. So I get myself ready to get up after 521 is served. But I start by to tell you today that each one of us have a number. And the moment we are in, we ought to be listening for our number. Which of us in this place today will see tomorrow, we don't know. But it behooves us to live this day as if it's the last, lovingly, and in peace with all men. And when sleep is called upon us, for those who die in Christ, it's not a death, it's a sleep. Because I hear the songwriter say, how sweet are the tidings that greet the pilgrim ears. As he wander in exile from home, soon, soon will the Savior in glory appear, and soon will the kingdom come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah again. Soon, if faithful, if faithful, we shall be there. Oh, be watchful, be hopeful, be joyful till then, and a crown of bright glory we will wear. Everything we do in our life is recorded on that dash between your sunset and your sunrise. 
We can change yesterday. We can ask God for forgiveness. But I ask us today to surrender our life to Jesus now and move on with him in eternity. Because believe it or not, there is a game we play when we're kids, hide and seek, ready or not. Here I come. I stop by to tell you, believe it or not, your number will be called. And your drunk drive will be reviewed. How shall you stand in that great judgment day? Shall you be found wanting? At this point, we would like to pray for the family. If you bow your heads with us, please. The God of glory and the God of peace, the God of mercy, we ask you now that you will look down upon the McDermott's family. Put your arms around them. Let them feel your presence in the midst of separation, knowing that with you all things are possible. We are not asking them to be joyful that their loved one has passed on in sleep, but we're asking them to give thanks that you are with them, that you will keep their mind on you, that you will keep them in perfect peace amid this storm. Comfort them even now. Let them know that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Oh God, shelter them. Shelter them even now. And let them have a testimony to give the glory to God. We pray for the wife, son, and the young man. May you now take over. Wrap him up. And let him be like Daniel. Let him be like Joseph. Anoint him to be a witness for you. We sanctify your name and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Bless this congregation, we pray in Jesus' name. At this point, I know we move from here to the next level. They have the Paul Beer the, um, to give the instruction. We want to thank those who have remained to celebrate the finishing of this with the family. We appreciate it. And we know folks have things to do, so we do appreciate your support as we go from here. So do you have some instruction for us to follow? I think we go from here to... What's it? Tedford Park Cemetery. That's in Old Harbor. What we like to do is that when the casket, uh, when the hearse go out and those that are going, we put our four-way flashes on. We follow closely. This is the only time I will tell you that you have... This is the only time I'll tell you you have the okay to go through the red light together. All right? And police escort, it. oh well, it's better for you now. You have police escort so you can safely go through the red light. So let's put our four-way lights and follow closely together without bumping each other. Thank you. Great is thy faithfulness, oh. Thou changes 
will live again. It is the word of God. It behooves us who are alive to understand that there is a day will come when each of us will have to answer according to the dash that divides our sunset As I travel through this land, I've been blessed by God. I'm holding to His hand. My journey is almost over.
caught up to me, then shall it caught up. Send me joy and happiness, peace is mine. Tell the story, tell the story, caught up to me, them in the air. Hallelujah. Now, may the peace, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of a sheep, by the blood of eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. There's a land beyond the river that we call the sweet river.